what the heck is glucosamine and is it still useful to you and your joints in 2024? I'm Dr. John Tate. I'm a non-surgical orthopedic doc. And today we're going to jam on glucosamine a little bit because if we go back to the olden days of the 1970s and 80s, glucosamine was just a booming uh, supplement idea around joint health. And there's many companies making this stuff. And uh, does it work? All right, that's what we want to really shake down today. If we look back at the scientific literature that time when they're actually doing more rigorous studies on this, because Look, it's not a pharmaceutical. There's not a lot of money to do large scale uh, research on nutritional supplements. So a lot of these were company sponsored and with company sponsored stuff, there's always a question of bias, making results potentially look better than they are. But there were some good studies done, multi-center, randomized type of things where, you know, these are academic researchers that would take products and one would be an active ingredient, one would be just a placebo sugar pill that the patients were convinced they're taking glucosamine. And then they would really shake out the data over time to say, does it help pain? Does it help stiffness? Does it help the functionality of people by taking this molecule? So first, what the heck is glucosamine? Well, it is a little molecule that is inside our joint cartilage and the fluid that lubricates our joints. Okay, so that's why glucosamine is useful. And as we age out and we age our joints, the type of glucosamine or what's left of the glucosamine in your joints can deplete and deteriorate. So it makes sense that, hey, if we resupply this, uh, much like I do in the, in the world of stem cell and PRP, if your body's breaking down because it has stem cell exhaustion or not enough growth factors or other cytokines and proteins of a positive type to reconstruct and rebuild tissue, if I can resupply you with some in the area you need it, I can accelerate healing. So back to glucosamine, they put this to a bunch of people with different grades of arthritis. In other videos, I've talked about arthritis, what it is, how we grade it, but there's four grades and they were looking at a lot of people that had two, three, and four. So that would be moderate to severe grade arthritis. And what they found out and kind of makes sense is that the people that had more moderate symptoms and moderate grade of arthritis did better on supplementation. The ones that had worse grades of arthritis and worse symptoms, didn't get as much bang for the buck from the glucosamine. But a good portion of the people in that middle category did. And that's where I find a lot of patients walking into my office. They're kind of in that middle space. Their knee's been hurting for a while. They're not bad enough over here, grade four, like a bone on bone knee that requires joint replacement. So they start to talk about, well, what are the useful things I can do outside of medications? So glucosamine is still one of those molecules that's around. There's different forms of this. So I'm gonna get into that. Glucosamine hydrochloride, glucosamine sulfate, and then there's N-acetyl uh, glucosamine. And so we have to know the types of these uh, to know the route of uh, how you take them. And that last one, in a lot of the studies, it goes per rectum. That means, yes, up the, up the uh, exhaust chute. And most people don't wanna take it <laughs> that way. So the other forms, glucosamine hydrochloride and glucosamine sulfate will split out because this is another trick in the supplement industry is to use an inferior type of the molecule that was studied. I'll say that again. So a lot of manufacturing companies will look to cut corners on nutritional supplements to save money and increase profit. And so we look at the studies, they're studying glucosamine sulfate. You look at products, sometimes they have a glucosamine hydrochloride in there not the same thing. So this is an apples to oranges. Then if we look at the dosing, what's the clinical effective dose that they saw in these studies? Was it 500, 1,000, couple thousand milligrams? And then what's actually coming through in the product? So that's the other thing where a lot of companies will do this uh, kind of shell game on the labels of saying, hey, research back, clinically proven, things like that, which you should probably ignore just about everything on the front of a label and pay attention to what's on the back of a label. You know, really reading that that small fine print there to see what is exactly in this, what form of supplement or what form of glucosamine or whatever vitamin you're, you're looking for or supplement that is the right, what we call active form. Because there's a lot of inactive or cheaper forms or less absorbed forms that are constantly stuffed into these products to cut corners. So if we go full circle now, do I think glucosamine is still useful to people? I think we gotta run an experiment Number two, we gotta make sure you don't have conditions where you can't take this because some people taking glucosamine if they have glaucoma, 
diabetes, some other conditions, this may not play well with those conditions, may not play well with the medications they're on. So of course you always have to consult with your personal physician. This is education today. This is not a directive on what to take. So please consult with your own healthcare provider to get direction on this. This is just to tell you what you're looking for to have that conversation to make sure it's safe for you. But back to me, do I recommend these to my patients? I absolutely do. I have a product sitting over my shoulder uh, because I'm pretty bullish on nutritional resupplying to help joints from a longevity standpoint, right? Do we have empirical data uh, tracked over 10, 20, 30 years to show this stuff is successful? Kinda, it's been around that long, but there's not as many studies being done anymore. But what's happened in this time frame is companies, the good ones, have brought up the standards and the bioavailability of these molecules. So maybe now we think we're getting a little bit more of the right stuff down to the joints where we need it. So that's the 101 on glucosamine today and why it may be useful to joint health. If you like this kind of stuff on supplements, hit the like, subscribe, leave your comments below if there's other supplements you want me to detail because I'm happy to do that. And of course, if I can help you in any way, look at the description below. We have a link always to my practice. If you're dealing with an orthopedic problem, you just have not found the right solution for you, then I encourage you to fill out that form Get on a call with somebody on my team and we can see if we can point you in the right direction, whether that's with us or somebody else out where you live. But that's what we do to help people pain less and get out there, do the stuff they love doing more.